Hello, John here again. Here we go. So there's the ZX Spectrum. And as you can see, my TV can't tune into it. It is working because that is its screen. It's just my TV's you know can't tune far enough for it. Now I've got a an older telly upstairs, so I'm gonna try it and see how see what it's like so uh i'll see you in a sec couple of minutes right then i'm now on an older uh, tv hey my old xbox look slight distraction anyway one Working Sinclair Spectrum. Right. The uh, the tuning's not brilliant, but it is there. Um, this is where. Don't know where all the symbols are. There it is. Right then, you can tell I've never used one of these before, can't you? How do you clear? Right. Ten. God, where is everything? Two. Two, 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 go back. Why won't it go back? Right. Two. Right, that's that one. Two. Go to one. Run. Yes, yeah, scroll. There you go. So there's one. How do we stop? How do we stop now? Break. Yeah. We have got a bit of a sticky return key. Nothing a good clean won't fix. So what I'm going to do now is there's a there's an article on online where you can uh, oh where you can let's just unplug it we can where this there's an RF uh, box. There's an RF box just behind it somewhere here, or here I think it is. And you can disconnect the power from it and take the um, the video the video um, track the from the, the I think it's the ULA and take the signal out of the, the, the video chip uh, and just by putting a small capacitor on it 
we can actually connect it directly to this and convert it into a composite video which then should be able to play on any TV so that's what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to convert it into a into a composite ZX Spectrum so I can use it when I talk about programming um, the ZX Spectrum and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it step by step and I'm going to bring you guys along and so you can see how it's done I've been dying to try out my new um, solder 9 so this is the perfect job for it this only cost me what 20 quid so if I break it so what it's only 20 quid but I've shown I've proved that it works give it a clean I'm going to take it I'm going to take it apart I'm going to give the whole thing a good clean make it look very very new because it's not bad got a bit of a sticky return key you can, you can just see there's a little bit of damage on the, the key but I'm going to give it a good clean and then um, we'll see how it it goes from there so I'll see you next time when I'm hopefully I think the next time I'll show you this is when I've actually got it in bits and we'll take it from there see you later bye hello guys right I've taken the top off there's the keyboard so it's just a plate with a membrane so I'm going to try and uh, clean this up um, I'm not too sure if I'll take that off but you never know I might I might uh, be a bit daring but this is what I was on about there this this is the RF unit now if I, I've got to take the cover off there but if you let's see if we can, right, let's shift that out of the way you can see there's two holes and one is the power supply in and one is the actual uh, um, signal from the chip which I think it's that one there and what you do is you disconnect the power supply from here and then just put a capacitor uh, I mean the one on the web actually had the capacitor outside going in and but I, I want to take this top off and see how much space there is because if there's a enough space in there I'll put the capacitor in there and make it uh, so you can't see it so I'm going to try and take the top off and see um, what's in there and uh, we'll see you in a minute There we go. There doesn't look a lot of space in there. So uh, I'll have a bit more of it. But we're going to connect the connector up to that, that pin there. So I think it's this one here. Now I bought some capacitors to do it. I had to buy like 20 of them just to do this one. And you just sold it. I think you sold it from there to there. And then you snip that that one there, and then that converts it into a composite uh, unit rather than RF unit. But I'm going to just uh, get my iPad out just to make sure, and uh, I'll see if I can get it done. I'll talk to you in a bit. Right, I've looked online, and let's see if I can get some light on this uh, bad boy. Right. right see that 
bit difficult. See, no, can't get my finger in the way. That cable there, that one there, that's your five volt line. And what you've got to do is you've got to cut it as close to the board as you can. So you don't accidentally ground the RF board. And then the next line in, which is that one there, that, try to get some light on the subject. That is the line from the video. And what we've got to do is see where it's connected to the, the uh, board. We've got to desolder that, desolder the resistor that's connected to the center of the there and we've just got to put in a capacitor between that solder joint down there and the center point and once that's done we should have a working ZX spectrum composite so I'm just going to dig out the uh, capacitors and we'll do those steps so I'll see you in a minute hello guys there you go as you can see I've put the capacitor on the line feed, connected it to the center of the uh, phono and disconnected the power supply. So it's just a case of putting this back together and seeing if it works. I'll see you in a minute. I'll show you if it does. Bye. Right then, there's the ZX Spectrum. And remember when my TV couldn't show it? Look what that's. And I still cannot figure out how to use this. I don't think the keyboard's plugged in properly. There's M, N, I'm missing B, V, C's alright, X, Z's missing. That thinks it's two cats lock. Thinks edits one. Right, better have a look at this keyboard. I probably haven't pushed pushed it in right. Right, I'll talk to you in a bit. Well, at least the mod works, even though I've screwed up my keyboard. Won't be back. I'll be back in a bit. Hello, John here. Um, here we are again. Spectrum, if you remember when I did it last time it wouldn't work, well it was this fella, if, uh, if you look very closely there is uh, a kink, don't know if you can see it, can you see it, there, there's a kink where it bent over in the case and because of the age it's wrecked the tracks. So, 
I bought a new one, cost me 18 quid uh, from a company. I'll put the uh, I'll put the link in the descriptions. Very good service. They've got it here in what three days. So let's turn her on and find out what happens. Well, she's already on. There you go. One perfect picture. So let's see if I can program some of Wow, got to get used to this. Keys are in the wrong place. See, keep hitting the nine instead of the zero. <laughs> slight bit of inference but not too bad so moral of the story I'm going to stop break there we go moral of the story if you're going to convert a spectrum be mindful that you might just wreck that now I've got two other spectrums I've got a proper I've got a rubber key one and I've got another one of these and what I'm going to do is I'm going to because the, the people that do this do the the uh, membrane for the original static spectrum. I'll, I'm going to order another one of these and one for the rubber key version. And I'll get them changed. So, I've, so now I've got another computer that I'm going to do on the, the programming basic series. Because ZX Spectrum basic is different than Commodore basic which is different from BBC basic. And so on when, we, when I start doing the series around basic we've got some uh, proper equipment to test it on so I'll see you in the next video take care bye